Hi everybody, this is really weird listening to my booming voice. Is everything okay? I'm not shouting at anybody yet. Okay, so I'm going to try to not mess up tech. I do have a way of accidentally pushing the wrong buttons, even though technology reports to me at Sky Creative. So let's try this. This is not going to be death by PowerPoint because I'm sure you didn't all come here to read. You came here for a conversation. So we'll just get into it. So, a body continues in its state of uniform motion unless acted upon by force. Who here has ever asked the question about why you do something at work and you get told it's historic or eh, we've always done it that way, I don't know. Anybody? Yeah. Those answers really, really get under my skin. Just because you've always done something some, you know, one way doesn't mean you should carry on doing it. You've got to look, you've got to evolve, you've got to change. Now you shouldn't change just for the sake of changing, but surely there are improvements over time. So we all go through change every day. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, change happens. Sometimes it happens to us. Sometimes it happens because of us. Sometimes it happens despite us. And sometimes I think with karma, it happens to spite us. So there are multiple types of change. Today I'm going to talk about transformational change and why we need to embrace change within our organizations. Because if we don't, we're going to stagnate. Change is not comfortable, but it is necessary. So about me, because you know we all talk about ourselves, so it was never an ambition of mine to actually get into advertising. I was a stay-at-home mom, I went onto a website, and I saw that the ad agency's website had a hell of a lot of typos on. So it was back in the day in 2005, I did screenshots, I printed everything out, marked everything nicely in a red pen, sent it to the CEO, and I got a phone call. The next day, I had a meeting, and I walked out a proofreader. It was a change I didn't plan, but it happened. So when I started out, what they didn't tell me was that I was actually inheriting a really dysfunctional team of proofreaders who made a lot of spelling mistakes, which really does defeat the purpose of, of having proofreaders. So when, when I looked at it, I needed to make some small changes that I thought were obvious at the time. So the first thing that I did was I realized that the proofreaders were all sitting in different areas of the building. So I moved them all into one office. That didn't go down very well, because it turns out they really didn't like each other. <laughs> but hey, so then after that, we actually looked at the work that they were doing. You know, they, they really enjoyed, some people really enjoyed the fast retail, other people enjoyed the big billboards, and they were, very, they were really cherry picking the work that they wanted to do. So again, they didn't like it, but I changed it up, and we reallocated the work. Then we decided, okay, we're gonna do second checks. Now, nobody likes having their work checked, but in proofreading, having been a proofreader and having made spelling mistakes in print, I will admit to it, it is important to have that second check or you really start to develop word blindness. And then after that, we, we did checklists. Now, these are not massive changes. These are not impressive changes, but they were necessary changes and they were very effective. So we course corrected everything. And we went through that developmental change. Now, those small changes are exactly that, developmental. It's like breathing. You don't really think about it. It's just obvious. You do it. There you go. Transformational change, however, is bigger. So I personally went through a transformational change when, in 2017, I got an airplane with my daughter and three suitcases, and I immigrated to the UK, and I started from scratch. And that was a really, really big change for me because I went from a really cushy head of department role at TBWA in South Africa to not being able to find a job. After 750 job applications, I actually stopped counting because <laughs> nobody would hire me until I met Jamie Adams from Welcome, and he actually gave me a job as a freelance proofreader. So this immigration transformed me because it knocked me down quite a few pegs and it literally took me back to where I started in 2005. Then, in 2019, a recruitment agent reached out to me about a job at Sky Creative. So now, you know what it's like when recruitment agents reach out to you? They spam you on LinkedIn. So luckily, I actually did open it, and I read the, the um, actual email, and he asked me about, oh, but do you know it's in Osterley? Osterley so far, commute. No, 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 all good. But I actually had to Google Sky Creative. I did not know that they existed. They were either the best kept secret or they were really bad at advertising themselves, which really defeats the purpose of an advertising agency. But I decided to go for it. 
So I didn't think I'd get the job. I'd never really actually thought about going internal before. When I did actually get the job, somebody from my previous world came up to me and said, are you having a breakdown? Shame. Can't you handle the pressure of external anymore? Do you need to go internal? And I was like, what on earth? What do people think? Well, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I've never been more stretched, challenged, or stressed in my entire life since I've gone in-house. It's, it's a whole different ball game. So, if we look at that. So now that's about me. That was transformational change that I went through. So that's what transformational change is for a business as well. It changes you from one thing to another. It's complicated, it takes planning, it takes time. But the important thing to remember is because it changes your business, it changes your employees' worlds. Transformational change isn't something that happens often, but it's often required and completely ignored or delayed, and that's why businesses actually stop. So, when I actually started at Sky Creative, I had the best of intentions. I was going to do what every director does. You walk in with a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day plan. It was going to be perfect. Ten days in, covered. And suddenly, I had to change my focus, and I actually had to get 300-plus people working remotely. Starting a new job, I knew no one. But luckily, I had a head of production and a head of technology who were quite on the ball. I, I inherited a good team. And they really pulled things together, and we managed to actually change the way Sky Creative works. Now, according to McKinsey, in an article in 2019, approximately 70% of transformations fail. That's a shockingly high number for businesses that need to go through change. Who here remembers Blockbuster Video? In their heyday, I was very, very surprised with these stats, but in their heyday, they actually employed over 84,000 people. In 2000, Netflix approached them about Blockbuster buying Netflix, and Blockbuster wasn't interested. We know who's still standing. Then we think of somebody else, Kodak, really old school. Who remembers film cameras? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Kodak really is a very good example of how you don't embrace change and how you end up closing your business. They were founded in 1889. They were, at one stage, they were the world's biggest film company, but they didn't embrace change. They built cameras for phones, but they didn't embrace the digital camera era, and they declared bankruptcy in 2012. As I was thinking about this topic, I, I looked back over the different organizations that I've actually worked at over the last 20 years, and when I look at changes that Sky has undergone, I can really see how that business has transformed and how much has been achieved as a result. So believe in better. Believe in better is Sky's mantra. So this is the belief that we can constantly do better, that we can achieve better, that we can make lives better. It's the driving force behind changes that Sky actually implements and the changes that they've undergone so far and that they are continuing to undergo. In 1989, Sky launched TV with four channels, including Sky News, which was Europe's first 24-hour news channel. Then Sky Transformed broad broadcast and started to have live sport. Then Sky Plus, which gave the consumers the ability to rewind and pause TV at the switch of a button. You didn't have to use your old VCRs or Betamax and that type of thing. And then Sky Q, the Sky Q box in UHD. Sky launched Sky Mobile, Sky Broadband. Sky launched Ocean Rescue. Sky committed to going net zero carbon by 2030. Sky expanded into multiple territories, and 2021 saw the um, launch of Sky Glass. Anybody here have a glass TV? Oh, this is sad. OK, so the glass TV is actually pretty Im impressive. An integrated TV, and as the payoff line goes, no dish, no box, no fuss. You plug it in, it works as long as you actually have an internet connection. Sky has undergone transformational change, and it's embraced it and become a market leader. Then what Sky Zedek have done, they've actually challenged Sky Creative to see how we are going to actually grow and change and evolve with them. So now, because I do work for Sky Creative, I am going to show you a reel about the things that we are actually doing so you can see the type of agency that we are. Welcome to the next generation like the fire. We 
connect on every level. From a design level to a production level. From an advertising level to a promotions level. And every level in between. And not just on the TV level. But on the TV, TV level. Say hello to the magic of Sky Glass. Raising the noise level. We're trying to make a level playing field. We are the future. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. It's a leap of faith. That's all it is. A leap of faith. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm in. in. To kick it out. We've had to add another level to our trophy cabinet. But we've managed to stay level-headed. And while connecting on a virtual level, we've kept up our spirit level. This is their moment. Our greatest accomplishments cannot be behind us. Because our destiny lies above us. And now, we're going next level. Connecting on every level. Light the touch paper! And that is my sky and the thing that's made me greyer and made me lose some hair as well. So, whoops, I knew I was going to break that. Okay, so, in 2017, yes it was before I joined Sky, but it was clear that transformation was important. Sky Creative was a broadcast operation. That's what they did. They supported broadcast and they created broadcast promos. And the execs challenged my MD to build an advertising in-house agency and to actually bring in the advertising and the account management functions. He was told it wouldn't work. Why would we be competing with the large external agencies? But he decided to go ahead and do it, and he did. So he grew it, um, and that was quite an, an, an evolution. We also built a brand team, the, the brand team that actually made up of brand designers that actually build every brand that Sky launches now. They work on literally everything that we do. 2019, there was more change. So it turns out that Sky actually had two in-house agencies. They had Sky Creative that was above the line, and they had Sky Works that was below the line. And then in 2019, at the end of 2019, it was clear that they needed to actually integrate the two agencies. Some more change. That was an uncomfortable change. You've got two teams, differing expertise. You've got differing agendas. You've got workflow tools that are different. And we suddenly had to bring everything together. So that happened towards the end of 2019. And then, of course, 2020, our year to remember. Saying that COVID impacted change would be an understatement. Every business underwent significant change, and we are, were all faced with the same issues. Lockdown, remote working, illness, global pandemic. Everybody here, I'm sure, had to actually change the way you worked. I remember the first few months of us actually being in lockdown. I mean, it was ridiculous, us looking to, are we going to use Zoom? Are we going to use Skype? Are we going to use Teams? This is so exciting. And people were really feeling inefficient and feeling isolated. Now, it's about how do we actually get people back to work. So now it's, it's, it's more of a change and more of a transformation. Because if you think about how you hire people now, people always ask about flexible working, hybrid working. How many days do I actually have to be in the office? And that's making the, the employment opportunities greater for people, and it's making it a much harder um, time for us to actually recruit. So we changed the way we worked. We did live news from presenters' homes. We carried on. We adapted. 2021 saw even more transformational um, change for Sky Creative. So at the beginning of last year, the execs challenged us again. They told us to look at quality, consistency, and efficiency across all our territories. Sky is in multiple territories, and Sky currently has three Sky Creatives, one in Germany, one in Italy, and one in the UK. Well, now, I am pleased to say that we, there will be one Sky Creative. We have undergone a huge change, and we are now launching the European Hub. That's us. 
We're becoming a group function across territories, and we will service Sky in all of Sky's products going forward, launching consistent brands across multiple territories in multiple languages while still being relevant to local audiences. Now, localization and transcreation, it's not a new thing, but it's a new thing for Sky Creative. It's the right time for us to do it, and we've been really working on this transformational change. This change has taken a lot of planning, interrogating processes, roles, types of work across territories, resulting in one operating model. And we will be location agnostic. We will be servicing the different territories and any future territories from Italy and the UK specifically. Okay. We didn't implement this change in isolation, though, because you should never implement change in isolation. We had a core team of approximately 50 people that were interacting with 700 people across six different territories to actually look and see what we needed to do and properly understand it. Different languages, cultures, mindsets, ways of working, HR and legal systems, finance reporting, technical infrastructure, and so much more. I've learned more than I ever thought I would have to about uh, cross-border teams, tax, Brexit, really inconvenient <laughs> at the moment with, with building a European hub, um, employment law, right to work, visas, a European PNL, a virtual PNL. It's been a massive, massive learning curve for me. We've gone from a team of 300 to approximately 650, excluding our freelancers and our partners. We've built a hub partner model where our partners are part of our team and they are an extension of the team, and we continue to do that. It's not about us as creatives or as the lead agency holding onto every piece of creative work. It's about how we actually work with others going forward. There's a lot of work to go around, and we need to find the correct skill sets for the correct work, and we need to do it efficiently. So I'm really excited about this change. It's certainly going to have its, its challenges as we navigate how we actually allocate work and things that we do, but it's new. But now, all of that said, and I know it's been like a whistle-stop tour, but all of that said, the, the key thing for me is not to remember how many people Sky Creative has employed or that I used to live in South Africa or anything else. The things that I would love you to remember from today are some of the lessons that I've actually learned over the last 20 years when I look at change. So the first one is that change is constant and necessary. It can't be avoided. We are always evolving. I also now know that people are resistant to change. People are creatures of habit. They find comfort in what they know, and they hold on to it. As a leader, you need to have a clear vision and a reason for actually making the change. It's critical in transformational change. It's not done on a whim. It's not like cutting your hair. It doesn't necessarily grow back. You really do need to think about it. As a leader, you also need to share your vision. If people don't understand why you're making a change, they'll fight it. And you know some people won't like your vision, and they'll leave. And that's OK, and you need to be comfortable with that. Communicate to change. You can't spring it on people. Now, things are confidential, and not everything can be discussed up front. But you do need to communicate what you're doing, because it, it alleviates uncertainty and fear. You can't do it in isolation. And then you need to reinforce and remind your team about why you're actually making the changes. People forget. People get busy. You've got to go back to the principles of why you did it and then actually remind them and bring people on that journey. There you go. Bring people on the journey. Change management is real and it's necessary. You know, back in the 2000s, I really thought it was just like a buzzword and a money-making racket. It's like, oh, we'll bring people on the journey. It'll be so nice. Now, now I actually really do see the benefit of it. And we've got a change team that has actually been working on this. You've got to have people that will actually champion your change and support people through it. I am definitely a convert when it comes to change management. We need to teach people how to embrace change. It's often feared, but if it's easier to understand, it will be embraced. I find change uncomfortable, but we've got to do it. What's the worst that can happen? Well, you could be blockbuster, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> so, Remember that you, while you may think you have all the answers, you don't necessarily. Talk to your people and listen. Find out what's really working, what really actually goes into their day-to-day -day and what they do. Understand the detail and then reevaluate the change and see if it's actually really necessary. Insight can come from the strangest places. The one thing that I have learned through 
us building out the hub model is as senior people in the room, we all have ideas of how things work and we are always corrected. Never count on the most senior person in the room knowing all the detail. Making informed decisions doesn't mean you won't make judgment calls. You'll have data, you'll have plans, you'll have budgets. You'll have lots of PowerPoint slides and everything else, but there will still be blind spots and you'll need to make judgment calls. So follow your gut on that one. Adapt and adjust. No change is written in stone. We all grow and we all evolve over time. So you need to review your decisions, acknowledge what works, but most importantly, acknowledge what doesn't work and adapt. You're not married to it, you can change it, you can say goodbye. You don't have to be in a position of power to actually impact change. When I started, I was a junior and I made changes to things. We all impact change in some way. You don't have to be the most senior person in the room. Change can take a long time. It can be tiring, but be patient. And you create your own opportunities. Pay attention to what's happening around you. Growth opportunities come suddenly. I've been very fortunate. I've been given lots of opportunities as I've been involved in change. You should pay attention to it. But then I think the most important thing for me out of everything, so if there's one thing from today, I think this is the key thing for me. I tell myself this when I go to work every day. I'm not saving lives, but I am impacting them. And I think that's the key thing. In advertising, we can all take ourselves so seriously but I'm not saving lives. I'm in advertising. Okay, and that's it. So, over to you.